uh, welcome to this uh, inaugural edition of Survey CTO's webinar series. Uh, in this first edition, we're going to look at repeat group relationships. So, just briefly before we get into that, for uh, the benefit of anybody who is not sure of the answer to this question, uh, in general, why would you use Survey CTO? So, just briefly, uh, Survey CTO's powerful form design, flexibility, and scalability are uh, key value adds and selling points of Survey CTO. Uh, Survey CTO helps you design robust forms and helps you test and debug those forms uh, to ensure that they work correctly. Also, many complex form designs and workflows are possible, like the design that I will walk you through today. Um, a big uh, cornerstone of service CTO as well is data quality and trust. Uh, we've built a lot of uh, data quality control features, including our review workflow, automated quality checks, uh, real-time monitoring, visualization, as well as data publishing. Data protection is a key concern of ours as well and of many users. Uh, many users make advantage of um, the multiple layers of uh, security that we offer, including uh, encryption, single sign-on, um, and also users are increasingly making use of our team functionality uh, to restrict access on their servers. Uh, we're also GDPR compliant. Um, also, for any of you who have used Survey CTO support before, you'll know it's highly responsive, um, and we have a, a lot of resources available to assist users, including our self-paced course, which we are producing at the moment. Great. Um, so I can see a couple more users coming in, uh, which is great. Welcome all. Uh, we're just getting started, so you haven't missed anything yet. So let me lay out our objectives today. Um, in what I'm about to walk you through, we are going to establish relationships using repeat groups. Um, so we're going to look at a household um, survey scenario. The first thing that we will do is list members of a household in a repeat group. From there, we will dynamically label a choice list with the member names from that repeat group. In the third step, we will recall member names in subsequent repeat groups to ask follow-up questions about those members. And amongst those follow-up questions, we will establish relationships between household members by making selections in the list in point two. So we'll look at two examples, establishing links between husbands and wives and children and parents inside the same household. So those are our objectives. Now, to contextualize um, a little better, um, let's take a look at the questionnaire that we will be using. Uh, the, the questionnaire um, first asks how many members exist in the household. It's a common method in Survey CTO. Uh, then there are some demographics in a first repeat group roster section. Some basic demographic questions you might ask. Then, following that first repeat group roster section, we ask follow-up questions about each woman in the household, whether she is married, whether her husband exists in the list um, inside uh, the current household, um, and if he does exist inside that household, uh, we ask uh, who amongst the men 18 and older is that woman's house uh, husband. Then uh, we inquire on children. So um, each child in the household, we ask whether their parents are alive and living in the household, and we try and match each child with the mother and father living in the household. So. These are easy to understand concepts and objectives, um, but you may not be aware strictly how to achieve these in a survey CTO form design. 
So we're going to look at how to get to this objective. So we're going to make use of the following ingredients or, or features in survey CTO. We're going to use repeat groups, which I hope you're familiar with. We're going to use hidden calculations and functions in those calculations. We will use survey CTO's feature to dynamically label choices. And we are also going to use choice filtering. All of these topics are well covered in um, help topics and support center articles. And I will assume a little familiarity, but I will uh, explain also the necessary uh, parts of each that you'll need to understand um, for this use case. So just bear with me and feel free to post your questions in the chat. So before we get into the design or, or testing of the form, I would like to discuss the functions which are necessary to make this happen. So you, you may or may not have encountered some of these so far, but I'll just explain these. So the first is if, which is a logical function. If returns one result, um, if true, and another if false. So in this example, there is a field by the name field, uh, which forms our condition. If field stores the value one, uh, then this expression returns the result in a field named true result. Failing that, a, a value stored in a field named false result is stored. So that's more or less how if works. It'll return, uh, but in the basic version of it, uh, one or the other result depending on your. Uh, the second um, function is index. Index returns the index number of a repeat group. So in the first instance of a repeat group, index returns the value one. In the second instance of a repeat group, index returns the value two. And in the third instance, index returns three, and so forth. So essentially this is um, matching with each time that you make your way through a repeat group. Uh, so the third function I'll discuss on this slide is index repeat. Index repeat, repeat is starting to get um, uh, in the direction of our, our more advanced functions. Um, indexed repeat is a special requirement. You need to implement it when you want to return a value from a specific instance of a repeated field from outside that repeat group. Uh, this is a necessity uh, because inside each repeated field, there are many instances of that repeated field. So in other words, um, in our initial roster, uh, the name field is repeated many times. So would, do you want the first, the second, or the third name? Uh, you need to tell survey CTO which of the names by repeat uh, instance number using index repeat. So in this first index repeat example, uh, we are returning a value stored in a repeated field, which happens to be named repeated field. And that repeated field can be found in a repeat group named repeat group. And we are calling these values dynamically using the index value. Um, if you recall, index returns one, two, three, depending on your position inside a repeat group. So this first example works inside another repeat group. The second example is static. Um, it is always calling the first value in the repeated field named repeated field, which can be found in the uh, repeat group named repeat group. Um, so we'll be using both of these uh, syntax examples in this sample form. Okay, so we have one more slide on required functions, and then we can uh, get on to uh, more, more interesting things, including examples of how this works in practice. Um, the, the fourth function that you need to understand um, to uh, execute this uh, solution is join. So uh, join 
joins values in a repeat group together with a separator. So in this example, uh, the values inside a repeated field named repeated field are joined together, separated by a space. You can see the result here. Um, if items one or if items with the values one, four, six, and nine were selected um, in a repeated field uh, over different instances, join would store a value like this. The uh, fifth function that we need to understand here is called selected at. Selected at returns a value from a space separated list. Now, it does this using position numbers. So you need to call the position uh, using a, a, a position number, which starts at zero for the first position in the list. So in this example, uh, selected at um, uh, being called on the select multiple field here with a position of zero, it's calling the first value. So using this example above with join, um, zero would be the first value, uh, one. Uh, one would be the second value, four. Two would be the third value, six, and so forth. Um, so that's, that's how um, you use selected at. And we're going to use join and selected at in a complementary way in our design. Now, the, the sixth and final um, function that we will be using in this design uh, is called count selected. And count selected is quite a nice, uh, simple function. It counts the number of selections in a select multiple field or the number of values in a space separated value list. So um, for example, uh, if three selections were made in a select multiple field um, and you were, were to call count selected on it, uh, that value, uh, that uh, expression would return the value three. Uh, or looking at our example above with join, there are four values in a space separated list. So count selected would return the value four. Okay, so those are all the functions we need to understand. Uh, you're gonna see these in actions and I'll, I will also show you examples of what this does in the data. So let's just recap um, our steps, just so we understand um, what we want to do. So we'll list our household members in a first repeat group. Then we're going to create what I've called uh, index lists for choice filtering later using the index, using, using sorry, the if function to categorize repeat instances and join um, them together in a, in a list um, separated by spaces. Then we're going to return those names and the, the ages of those people optionally from um, the repeat group using index repeat to create a choice list of members. Then uh, we're going to give the above choice list filter values equal to the choice values, which is very important. That will be crucial to the programming that we will do. In the fifth step, we will use index repeat and a follow up repeat group to call the names of each member from the first repeat group. Uh, lastly, we will display and filter the names listed um, down to a category using our index lists and make selections to establish relationships between the selected member and the member you are asking follow-up questions about in a follow-up repeat group. Now, if you don't understand from my description what's going on in point six yet, don't worry. Um, we will cover this in practice. So what I would like to do is um, explore the form design with you and uh, test it with you. Now, apologies to anybody who prefers um, the, the uh, online form designer. We are going to be having a look at this design um, in the spreadsheet design template. 
um, but I will move as slowly um, and carefully as possible uh, so that you can see everything that's going on. If you're not comfortable or super familiar with the spreadsheet design template, I'll give you a quick overview. All of your, your fields are present on the survey sheet. Um, we will, yes, uh, you, you, basically each field um, occupies a, a row. And each property of every field that you configure will be in a column. So we'll, we'll explore that together. Uh, the uh, choice lists um, that we uh, will be using are present on the uh, choices sheet. And there are a few settings on the settings sheet, but that's not important for this design. Uh, also notice that I have uh, anchored or, or frozen uh, columns um, A and B uh, in this design. So we'll always see the name and the type, no matter where I am in the form design. Okay, so let's take a look at the design. Here we have an integer field and we ask how many members does the household have? So we're gonna use this value inside raster n as the repeat count value. Uh, as per the convention in survey CTO, we're using the dollar sign and the curly brackets to return a value stored in another field. Uh, you'll see this throughout the design. Um, so, otherwise, uh, this particular uh, group has um, some less remarkable demographic questions. Um, the name collected in a text field, uh, the uh, age collected in an integer field. Um, we're collecting the gender as well. We're also asking if people are in school or not. Well, this, this is just a, an extra example of something uh, that you might want to do. We won't actually use it in this design. Um, if you are wondering, uh, the relevance uh, for this uh, group is, is not important or critical to this design, but this uh, relevance uh, will um, serve a, a function if you ever happen to go back to raster n and reduce this number, uh, this relevance would cause um, this repeat group um, to have uh, fewer repeat instances showing. Um, according to the number that you had revised raster n down to. Um, but uh, don't concern yourself with that at the moment. Uh, you'll be able to see everything um, in uh, context uh, when you um, happen to uh, test this later for yourself because you'll have access to the sample form. So don't worry about that. So let's take a look at uh, the calculate fields inside this repeat group. Um, they're all doing more or less the same thing. So in the field named calc men uh, index, we have this expression. So we have a condition uh, which says, um, if the age is greater than or equal to 18 and gender equals one, we return the index value from the repeat group. And otherwise, uh, in the if false outcome, I have a double single quote. So this is actually a, a cheat or a workaround uh, to tell the software um, that it should not store anything. Um, essentially, uh, there's nothing between the single quotes. Uh, therefore, uh, in the false outcome, nothing will be stored, just a blank value. Um, and this is uh, important for the design in this case. Each of these uh, fields is actually pretty much the same in, in this regard. Uh, they all store the uh, index value for this raster or repeat group um, if the condition is true um, and nothing otherwise. Uh, the conditions are just a bit different. So this first one, um, it is making, um, it is returning index in the case that uh, the respondent is uh, an adult and is male. Uh, one happens to represent being uh, male or masculine in this design. In the second field, calc women index, uh, we're making, we're storing the index for women only. 
uh, women happen to be represented by zero in the, in the choice list. And for children, uh, we're considering children, everybody uh, under the less, anybody who is less than 18 years old in this particular example. So that's all that's going on here. So if you remember, um, I spoke about index lists. This is what's happening in this part of the design. You can see that uh, the field, the uh, calc men list, it is joining all of the values in calc men index with a space. So the space um, is, is separating each of uh, the index values. And because nothing is returned um, in the false outcome, this list will only include uh, a, a list of the index values associated with men from raster all. And the same thing is happening with each of these, the calc women, calc children, and calc school index. And that is all that, that is happening here. Now, we have two banks or lists of uh, calculate fields using index repeat. Let's discuss the, the first one. So uh, what this instruction to survey CTO is saying is we want to return the field, a uh, value from the field called name. Name is up here. Name happens to be located in the roster all repeat group. So here we can see name is inside the roster all repeat group. And we want to store the value in the first instance of, of Rust name. So the very first time you complete a uh, name, this value will be stored here. And the same goes for the rest of these. The second name, the third name, the fourth name. Uh, we're also storing the age values in the same way. So we're using these calculate fields to label our choice list here. Uh, we're using the uh, name choice list to display a list of up to 10 members selected um, in the, uh, or, or stored in the first roster all repeat group. Um, you could extend this programming method to display uh, as many options as you'd like, up to 20, up to 30. Importantly in this design, uh, filter values must be provided. And in this design, they should be equal to the values. Importantly, the values in our choice list must be sequential like this. They must be equal to index values as generated inside the repeat group. So um, this person must be the first person um, listed in, in the first repeat group. Okay, so we've, 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 set the, we've set the scene. We've, we've, we've prepared things for what we need to do. So let's take a look at this first repeat group. Now in this first repeat group, um, we are asking follow-up questions of women. Um, is Calc woman name married? Um, is uh, Calc woman's husband a member of this household? Which household member, 18 and older, is Calc woman's husband? So these are the questions we want to ask, but we only want to ask them when it makes sense. So how do we do that? Well, the most important uh, part of this um, is the relevance here. Um, notice how uh, inside the roster husbands group, a repeat group that is, we have a rust, rust, roster um, husbands uh, relev or, or relevant group. Um, and it has this relevance. So the requirement is that the value stored in calc woman age is greater than or equal to 18, i.e. The, uh, the given woman is 18 or older. And here we ensure um, when calc gender equals zero, that uh, the person is a woman, because again, zero represents female in this particular form design. So these two fields um, are these fields, calc woman name and calc woman age. And we're using index repeat to call these values 
matching the index, as discussed earlier, uh, from the roster or repeat group in sequence. So if you look at the repeat count for roster husbands, we're using count to uh, match the repeat count to that of the roster or repeat group. Uh, count returns the number of times a repeat group um, had been repeated. Um, so uh, it's a useful way of uh, matching um, repeat uh, group counts in this sort of context. However, uh, not every single member of this household will be a woman, uh, nor will she be 18 and older. So this is uh, the problem uh, that the Ruster Husband's Relative Group is solving with this relevance. In the background of this design, every single um, member is being recalled. So if seven household members were entered, this repeat group repeats seven times. But let's say only three women were um, 18 and older. Um, maybe one was, was recorded in the second instance, another recorded in the fifth, another recorded in the seventh. Uh, this relevance will ensure that uh, we only ask about those women. Um, so in the background, we, we actually have all of this detail um, for, for every single uh, member. So this is a, maybe a, a less um, efficient programming method. Um, because you'll have more repeat instances than you strictly need. Uh, but it's not a difficult method to prepare, and it can actually make your data um, more understandable uh, to make sure that the same set of fields uh, in, repeat, in repeated sections of data refer to the same people. Um, but that's to your preference, and we'll look at what the data looks like um, just now. So the other part of this design that I want to show you is the um, the choice filter for the husband field. So the husband field uses the name choice list that we saw earlier. So we need to scroll across to the choice filter column to view this. Here we're using the choice filter expression selected calc men list filter. So you're probably familiar with the selected function. It's a very commonly used function um, in relevance. Uh, selected uh, is a, a function that's either true or false. Um, so it tests whether uh, the value in the second parameter uh, is present in the first one. So um, what it is doing is it's taking um, each choice by a filter value from the, the choice list and testing whether it is present inside the list of values stored in calc men list. So let's say in a list of seven household members, um, the first three people were, were men. Um, so maybe um, in that case, uh, calc men list would store a list of values. One, uh, excuse me, uh, this is being formatted automatically by um, Google Sheets, which is not so useful. Um, so our list of values would be one, two, and three. Therefore, the choices um, that would be included in the choice filter would just be one, two, and three. Um, so that's essentially how um, this works. Now I have a, a second option for programming this, which is a little different, um, but a bit more efficient as well. So in contrast to husbands, in this last repeat group, we are cycling through every child in the roster, and we're asking a few questions. Is um, the child age such and such, um, which is uh, biological parents living in this household. Um, otherwise, um, we, we, we'll have the option to choose the parents, um, should the parents exist in the household. So, 
uh, that, that's our objectives. There's some extra questions which are not necessary strictly. Um, it's possible to pick a, a caregiver in case the mother um, is, is not uh, the main caregiver. Um, and you ask this question by default, um, because often these lines of inquiry have to do with uh, the care um, that, that you might um, uh, bestow upon the children in the household. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the ingredients of this form, of, of this uh, section. Um, here we have the repeat count. So the repeat count is using count selected, not count in this instance. If you recall from our slides, count selected returns the number of selections in a select multiple field or the number of values in a space separated list. Um, so calc children list contains a space separated list of index numbers associated with children. So again, um, if uh, three children exist in a household, uh, this value would be three. And the repeat group would only repeat three times, which is the contrast to roster husbands, which repeats one time for every time uh, that there's a repeat instance in roster all. Now let's discuss our calculate fields. Our first calculate field uses selected at. So we are returning values from the space separated list of values stored inside calc children list. And we're doing that with the index value. But if you remember again from our slides, uh, the, the numbering or, or position um, values for uh, selected at begin from zero. So in order to start counting from zero, I'm using index and I'm subtracting one. So in the first repeat instance, uh, this value will be zero and we will return the first value stored in calc child list. Then on, uh, we will select, or, or this will return uh, the second value. Uh, this is really important because this helps us go through only the children and not every single member of the roster. So we use this calc index value, which is only um, in each repeat instance, uh, the instance number for each child to return values from roster all. Index repeat here in this instance returns the name values from roster all in each instance, only from the children um, inside roster all. Uh, again, we're not going through every instance of roster all. This is filtered discreetly down to the children. And we're doing this for age and name. So unlike roster husbands, there's no need for uh, any uh, relevance because each instance will be relevant. We, because we will go through every single child in the list. Um, so that's what's happening with these calculate fields. But what I will discuss here um, as well before we test the form is um, the, the mother, father, and caregiver choice filters. Uh, we want to filter down to adult women, adult men, um, and adults in general, uh, both men and women in the uh, caregiver uh, field. So all three of these fields also use the name field, just like we did um, with the uh, roster husband's repeat group. So we'll scroll across to see the choice filter um, values. So take a look. Uh, these values, or, or these expressions rather, are a little bit more complicated than what we um, were using before. So just first to be clear, this method is not better or, or worse um, than using uh, selected um, with the um, index list. Um, that's a perfectly acceptable uh, method. And if that's um, easier, you can, you can do that. However, it is possible to use index repeat in combination with filter uh, to, to filter choice lists. So let's discuss what's um, happening here. So with mother, 
um, the first part of this uh, choice filter expression, we're using filter um, as the third parameter or argument inside index repeat. So what is happening here? Um, we are using uh, the filter values in the choice list uh, to return uh, the matching values uh, from gender, which is stored in the Rust rule repeat group. And we're testing whether those values are equal to zero. So in this way, we can make a comparison with every filter value. Um, but uh, the, the filter value in this case is, recall, is, is um, being uh, used to recall um, values stored in, in repeat instances, which match those, those filter values, which help us return um, a value inside those repeat instances so we can compare them to a value. So this first part needs to be true. Um, the gender value, in this case, uh, for the um, instances which match the filter value uh, in the choice list, must be equal to zero. The same is true here. Um, for the age value, which is being returned from raster all, uh, which is being compared to 18. It must be greater than or equal to 18. So what's happening with the uh, father um, choice filter expression is much the same. Uh, the only difference is that we require uh, that gender is equal to one. Again, which means that um, uh, the uh, repeat instance reflects somebody who, who is male uh, because one uh, is male in, in the particular choice list we're using. Here, um, the caregiver uh, choice filter is, is similar. We are uh, comparing um, the age value, um, which is returned from raster all, uh, from instances that match the filter. And we're testing whether they are greater than or equal to 18. Um, so we're only including 18-year-olds. But we're also making sure that the, uh, it's not possible to select mother um, as the caregiver um, if it was uh, indicated um, that the mother is not the primary caregiver. But that would not make logical sense um, for uh, the mother to, to not be the primary caregiver, but at the same time choose her as the primary caregiver. That would be um, entirely illogical. Um, and in this way, uh, we are able to um, work around that uh, contradiction. So I hope I still have you with me. Uh, we have completed our discussion of the form design. We are still um, able to answer questions about it. But so you understand um, what is going on in this design, I'll walk you through an example. So let's take a look um, at how our form actually works in practice. I will say that my household has uh, seven members. So just bear with me while um, I um, list some, some members. Perhaps uh, Anthony is a a uh, grandfather or something like that. I'm almost done. Um, I've captured uh, six members. Okay, so that is my, my roster. Now we will ask about the marital relations between adults in the roster. Okay, so is Margaret married? Now note here, we indicated that we are inside the third repeat instance. Um, Margaret was stored third, uh, but the members stored in the first two instances of the repeat group are not displayed here. 
So I'll say that Margaret is married. I'll also indicate that uh, Margaret's husband is a member of this household. So here we have um, the uh, adult uh, men, 18 and older, um, who we recorded in our roster. Um, Anthony is maybe a bit old to be her husband, so let's choose uh, Jonathan as her husband. Um, so again, remember, we listed seven different household members. Um, but our list is, is logically filtered to only display the options that make sense. Um, let's say that Judith is, is not married in this case. Now we will ask questions to connect children with their parents in the roster. Are Teddy's parents um, living in this household? Let's say that um, his mother and father are here. Um, let's say that uh, Margaret is Teddy's mother. Perhaps uh, Jonathan is uh, Teddy's father. And, and we can perhaps say that Margaret actually doesn't care for, for um, Teddy um, the most. Maybe she works. And perhaps um, Judith helps out because she's a, a student. Let's say um, perhaps um, only, uh, only Susie's uh, mother happens to live in the household. So here we have our um, adult uh, woman. It's possible that either Margaret or, or Judith um, could be the parent, but perhaps it's, it's Judith. And in this case, let's say that Judith um, is also the main caregiver. So, um, that is our, our form design. Um, so just briefly, uh, before we um, move to, to Q&A, uh, I have a, a couple more slides uh, just to drive home some points. Um, so we looked just to review at two repeat group strategies um, in this example. Um, they had different repeat counts. Strategy one, matched repeat counts between the first and the follow-up repeat roster. Um, unnecessary repeat instances in the follow-up roster uh, were, were made not relevant, um, but this results in blanks on the data, which I'll show you. Uh, the first and follow-up rosters are matched though, instance by instance, which can be useful. Strategy two only has the repeat count necessary to ask questions about a subset of members that you're um, asking follow-up questions about. No blanks in the data um, are, are to be found using this strategy. The repeat instances are not matched um, across the first and follow-up uh, repeat roster, but they can still be clearly linked. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that in the data. The second strategy is also more efficient. So the longer and more complex your form design, uh, you will want fewer fields where possible. So this is the resulting data from our husband's um, group. So the red rows are the rows that would be skipped, um, the, the blanks. They're not entirely um, blank. Uh, you can see uh, that the calculate field still store values, even though the instance was not relevant. So Dennis uh, was, was not, um, not a woman, uh, nor, but he is 18 or older. Um, but the, both of these were requirements, so the instance was, was skipped. Um, Margaret is a woman, uh, represented by zero here, um, and she's 18 and older. So this question, um, or this instance did appear. You can see that she was married, um, her, her husband um, is, is the man in, um, it, well, yes, uh, her, her husband uh, is in the household and he's the person in position three in Rasta Wall. Mark and Albert were skipped as well. Um, Louisa was also uh, married in this case. Her husband is the man in position four. So depending on your requirements, you might find yourself deleting these rows, these um, unnecessary rows. Now, 
and the same raster in the child repeat group, we can see only two repeat instances for the two children who were stored. Um, if you recall child index, child index is the uh, calculation that has selected at with index minus one. In the first instance, it returns only the first child. Um, and the second instance, it returns only the uh, second um, child. So we have the index values to help us link back um, to the raster all group. Uh, we have the names and we have um, all of the data uh, from this, this repeat group. Um, so that's the difference between uh, the, these two methods in terms of the follow-up groups. One is not necessarily better than the other because the results are much the same um, for your respondent. Uh, your, your form can be equally logical in both cases. Our webinar uh, session has come to an end. Uh, we hope that you uh, join us next time. Uh, please do uh, provide uh, feedback on your experience. Um, earlier in the chat, I had posted a link to a feedback form. Uh, the second link that I posted here is our feedback form. Um, you'll receive this link in an email uh, in a day's time as well. So thanks again and goodbye.